Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for allowing us to be part of your day. Well, we are in the month of August, and even though most of the bigger portions of the growing season is starting to go on the downward slope, August August can can be a very hot and dry month, and we are experiencing much of that across the country. Tree diaper can help hydrate those plants very easily. Yeah. How do you water your trees? You likely drag a hose over to it, let the hose run for about a half an hour, maybe longer, and go do something else. You need to stop And forget about it overnight. Right. Well, I hope not, but you need to stop doing that. Increase your watering efficiency and save money with Tree Diaper. No hoses to drag around constantly. Tree Diaper is a revolutionary watering system with it slowly releases stored rainwater when trees need it. The Tree Diaper is filled with water from rain or when you water and slowly releases water over three weeks. Tree Diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Every time it rains, Tree Diaper recharges. It's made in the USA. You can find all the sizes they have available at TreeDiaper.com. That's TreeDiaper.com. Well, Holly, many people are getting ready to can what they're harvesting or they're getting great deals at farmer's markets. And they're going to water bath can most likely. So what we're going to do is we're going to verbally walk through a a water bath procedure, what you should and shouldn't do and what you should be looking for so you can do it right. Now, we have many videos on our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, at the uh, top of the page. Um, You just search for canning what you grow. We've got 50 of them there on multiple different topics. So uh, we're going to walk through some of the things that you should know and do. And when it comes to water bath canning or pressure canning, uh, explain what both of those are. And most people, we would recommend starting with the water bath procedure until we get the hang of what we're doing. I think, yeah, definitely you want to start with water bath canning just to learn the canning process, essentially. Um, So water bath canning is for high acid foods or low acid foods that have the addition of acid or sugar. So something like you wouldn't water bath can carrots themselves, but you could water bath can pickled carrots. Or, for example, you wouldn't water bath can corn corn but you may water bath can corn salsa right which has the addition of acid like a vinegar or lemon juice and salt or um well most fruit is pretty high i don't you wouldn't have to necessarily pressure can fruit but fruit has that high sugar content so that's kind of the difference so the biggest thing you want to keep in mind is always follow a trusted resource recipe. We've seen we've been getting a lot of questions in lately about, I have this recipe that I got from a random YouTube video. Is it safe? Uh, this happened. Is that okay? And I'm not going to tell you it's okay because I follow safe canning methods. So, so yeah, you want to use a resource such as the National Center for Home Food Preservation, Ball Canning, Uh, Better Homes and Gardens, if you have a university extension or you have a master canner who provided you a recipe, all of those are good. So water bath canning is simply the, the act of submerging jars in boiling water and, and canning them. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) It's called water bath canning or boiling water canning. So the first thing you want to do is obviously have something to water bath can. If you're like, I'm not sure if I want to commit to buying a canner. If you have a stock pot that's fairly deep and you want to, if you, even if you just try pines, you, as long as you have an inch or two of water above the top of those pines, you could use like a deep stock pot. And, and that's, you, you want that water at the time, at the beginning procedure to be that one to two inches above whatever size jar you're using. And not and all, lid. and you need a lid. And right. no, not all jars are safe to can with. And you would think, well, why would Ball make jars if you can't can with them? Speaking about the sixty-four ounce or the half gallon jar. Oh yeah, so yeah, you you can only can in uh, safely um, in quart, pint, half pint, four ounce. What is it? Half a cup? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. That's I mean, correct. you can, what is it? Grape juice and apple juice. That's the, it. Uh, in the half gallon jar. That's it. That's right. Yeah. But you would need a, a big can. Correct. Because half gallon jars are, are quite tall. So, aside from that, um, I'm just going to stick to the nitty gritty here. Right. Um, and again, the National Center for Home Food Preservation is a great resource about safe canning. 
Um, so you want to make sure you have your water bath can or whatever you're going to use. Um, and then you want to read your entire recipe. You might get your recipe, okay, I'm going to make this. And then all of a sudden you realize you have to let something soak for three hours or overnight. So that's what you want to make sure you have all the ingredients on hand. And you want to make sure you, you read that recipe for the process. Um, and then you want to check your jars. Your jars, if, especially maybe if this is your first time canning and your uh, best friend's mom gave you a bunch of jars, she's like, oh, you're going to can? And you're like, yeah. And they, she's used them a bajillion times. You want to check the top to make sure there's no dents in the top of the jar. You want to make sure there's no cracks in the jar, something that might look funny you want to make sure they're actually canning jars right not times, all not all glass jars are created for canning purposes yeah a lot of times like a ma like an old mayonnaise jar or something might get for, for people the... who don't realize that back in the day mayonnaise used to come in a glass jar not a plastic squeeze bottle right <laughs> exactly so <laughs> mayonnaise jars whatever so you want to make sure you use a canning a true canning mason jar so you want to check your jars um then you want to clean them However, however you clean them, you use your dishwasher or whatever. You want to keep them warm. So you, we keep ours in the oven. Some people put theirs in the dishwasher under like the warm mm -hmm. setting, whatever that is. Um, so yeah, or some people put them in their canner until they're ready. But we found keeping them in the oven on the lowest temperature is what works best for us. Um, and then you want to fill your jars. So the recipe will say fill to have leave this much headspace and that's the top that's the difference between the top of the jar to whatever is in your jar so if you got jam you want to usually use it's like a quarter inch headspace you can buy a tool called a headspace measurer and then you measure the top between the jam and the top of the jar that happened so you're going to fill your jar leave your headspace and then you're going to wipe the top of the lid the rim off to make sure there's no food or water or whatever. You put your lid on and then you put your ring on and then you finger tighten it. You don't want to tighten it like the Hulk. You want to finger tighten it and then you put it into your canner and then you do this until all of your jars are full and your canner is full and then... And while you're doing this, you, you've got the canner in the process of warming up. Yeah. And it may be a, a boiling, it may be a rolling boil by the time you're getting your jars in or not. And when does the time, when, if it says for process for 20 minutes, when does that timer start? You want to start the timer once you have all the jars in and there's, it's a true roaring boil. You know, it's a roaring boil because if you were to stir, stir that pot, the boil would not be disturbed. Okay. So you want to put them in there and then you time it. You want to even put your lid on the canner and then you time it, whatever the, the time is, if it's five minutes, 20 minutes, whatever. And then you want to... When they're done, you Ding. can, you can um, pull them out. You can wait a few minutes if you want. Like, if that's the only thing you're canning, you can turn your canner off and wait a few minutes. Otherwise, you can just pull them out. If you're doing pickles, like pickled cucumbers, you want to pull them out right away. That'll prevent mushy cucumber, mushy pickles. And then you put them on, like, a, a, a dish towel, a, whatever you have. But you don't want to put them directly on a counter or a table. You want to put down a towel or something. Now, we have um, experienced a uh, jar breaking every now and then. What is, num two things before we get out of this segment. Why would a jar break? And two, why would a jar not seal properly? Sure. So sometimes jars just don't seal. There's no necessarily a reason. You might just have a faulty lid. It might just not have happened. It's a pressure thing. You need that pressure. Or you didn't clean it or properly. Or you didn't clean yeah. it properly, right. Um, so that's reason one. Two, reason two why a jar might break is, again, just might be the pressure of the whole thing. Um, otherwise, if you took if you take a cold jar and put it in the hot water with hot stuff in it, it's going to break. We've, we've done that a mm -hmm. couple of times. Uh, we've learned from our mistake there. So water bath canning, if you've got questions, certainly you can send us a uh, Holly an email at gardentalkradio at gmail.com. You can go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com and search for canning what you grow and we walk through very detailed uh, steps on how to can many of your common items. Well Holly summer's in full swing now and uh, Fall is in the front of the windshield and spring is in the rear, but it doesn't matter because those Japanese beetles are here and they're going to stay as long as they possibly can. 
Yeah, if you're looking to successfully control those beetles without damaging the environment, look no further than Beetle Gone from Phylum Bioproducts. It's derived from naturally occurring soil bacteria. Beetle Gone is the only organic solution that successfully controls beetle invaders. You just mix the powder with water and spray it on your plants. Once ingested, the targeted pest will stop feeding and die. And since it's an organic BT product, you know it's a great choice to use on your fruits and vegetables in addition to your ornamental flowers and shrubs and trees. Not only does Beetle Gone work, what the best part of it is, it's not, uh, it doesn't hurt beneficial insects like ladybugs, butterflies, or bees. It's safe for all of them and has zero water toxicity. That's Beetle Gone from PhylumBioproducts.com. Have you checked them out? That's P-H-Y. L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. Hey there, gardeners. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. If you like what you've seen, you can search through the channel and find full in-studio videos of the entire show. If you want to go another route, you can search for it on your favorite podcast platform by searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show or the gardening with joey and holly radio show and you can download it and take it with you you can check out all past seasons at our website the wisconsin vegetable gardener.com under the radio tabs at the top of the page we thank you for joining us we hope you've learned and enjoyed the show the segment and we'll see you next time